training for six-pack abs and the perfect body. If you follow the diet outlined in video 7, then you should find that you start to lose weight from all over your body, and this eventually reaches the gut. But here's the unwanted surprise. You won't instantly get the amazing stomach you always wanted. Apart from anything else, there's probably still flabby skin here, and perhaps even stretch marks. That's because the real magic happens in the gym. Not only is muscle metabolically active, meaning that you'll burn more calories even when you're sleeping once you're strong, but it's also what makes a person look toned and honed, far more than low body fat can. If you have low body fat alone, then you will look skinny and malnourished. If you have low body fat and great muscles, then you'll look like a celebrity. The problem is that many people don't know how to go about training their bodies for the maximum aesthetic benefit. So let's see what you need to know. Abs. Let's start by focusing on the part that everyone is interested in. The abs. How do you take your now fatless belly and turn it into something that Brad Pitt or Angelina Jolie would be proud of? It starts with anatomy. Too many people will want to focus purely on the sheet of muscle on the front of the stomach that is divided into six parts. This is the rectus abdominis. But it is only one piece of the puzzle. What's actually more important in many ways for people looking to get rid of belly fat is the transverse abdominis. This is the band of muscle that wraps around the stomach and lower spine and works to support the back and act like a girdle. The good news is that if you train this part of the stomach, then it will work to actually hold in the gut. Now, even if you haven't managed to get rid of all the excess flab around your belly, it will look instantly less noticeable. So how do you train the transverse abdominus? It comes down to anything that involves holding your body in the plank position. So a plank is a good one then. Or breathing in and bringing your belly button up to your spine. This is the idea behind stomach vacuums, or what is sometimes lovingly referred to as the cat puke exercise. Essentially, you need to go on all fours and then practice pulling your belly in towards your spine. Hold for 10 seconds, then repeat. Another important part of your midsection are the obliques. These are muscles on either side of the abs which run and point downward toward the center. Getting a great set of obliques is a surefire way to add a lot more detail that results in a much more ripped final impression. To train the obliques, you simply need to perform sit-ups with some kind of twist at the end. That might mean literally twisting backward and forward, or it might mean using a punching bag. All this is not to say that the rectus abdominis isn't important too. It is. And this is what will give you the vaunted six-pack look after all. To train this layer of muscle, it's useful to first have a good idea of how it operates. Essentially, the role of this muscle is to prevent you from snapping backwards and to hold your body upright by tugging against the erector spinae. It's also used when you bend forward, of course. What all this might tell you is that the rectus abdominis is often trained without going through the full range of motion. This is why performing sit-ups over a basu ball can be a good way to stretch it out and to challenge the muscle fibers that often get missed. Another powerful tip if you want abs is to try and add resistance to your training. That might mean doing sit-ups while holding a weight plate, or it might mean using machines that provide more of a challenge while crunching in the gym. Either way, lifting heavier will help you to grow bigger and more defined, and this definition is what you need for your abs to stand out. Some people might contest that last point and say that strengthening the abs will do nothing for the appearance. The easy way to contest this statement is to try contracting your abs right now while looking in a mirror. What you'll find is that they instantly become much more visible, which is simply because they're now bigger and firmer. Train with some resistance, and this is what your abs will always look like. Weight loss. Of course, you can also use exercise in order to encourage more weight loss, and this will indirectly lead to better looking abs. There are plenty of exercise programs that you can use in conjunction with the diet in this video course, but ultimately the right one will depend on your specific goals and your training style. One more rumor that you need to dismiss, though, is the idea that you need sub-10% body fat in order to see abs. I know this rumor to be false, as I'm sitting here at around 15% and you can see my abs. The same goes for an actor such as Chris Evans, Captain America. He is not insanely shredded and probably has a body fat percentage of around 10 to 12%. He still looks amazing, which is thanks to the large, thick muscle that he has built up. But what is the best option for weight loss? One popular choice is to walk. This is a form of exercise that won't trigger a fight-or-flight response, meaning you can do it often and without feeling more tired at the end of a long day. Running is great, but you can only run so many times a week, and it's not highly practical. You arrive everywhere sweaty. Walking, though, is something you can fit into your daily routine and that you can do often in order to keep burning large amounts of fat. Another good option is HIT. This is high-intensity interval training. 
and it essentially involves switching from training that uses slow, easy-going cardio to training that involves going nearly all out for short bursts. This is ideal for using up glycogen, which, as we've seen, can help to prevent sugar from ending up as fat or traveling through the blood. What's more is that this means you actually burn more fat for the rest of the day as you don't have the glycogen stores to fall back on. And lastly, consider concurrent training. This simply means that you are combining cardio with resistance training, doing some kind of repetitive task quickly with added weights. A good example might be using a stationary bike in the highest resistance settings or using the battle ropes. This uses a lot more energy than simply doing cardio and has the added bonus of toning muscle at the same time. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.